Wow, that was exciting. Well, that's a first for us. It's beautiful. Okay. <laughs> and considering that we did not practice, they did a marvelous job. Okay. I seem to have difficulty on this title that I, uh, at first I decided to call it Quit Growing Old and Grow Up. Then I decided Stop Growing Old and Grow Up. I think they mean the same thing, but uh, in any case, you get the drift here. Quit it, okay? Stop it, okay? Uh, and there's a way to do that. Oh, that mic. Okay. Ooh, okay. Oh. All righty. Uh, maybe it is. Oh, that is. Okay. I think I turned it up when the children were singing. Sorry. Testing one, two, three. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. Lower. Okay. Okay. I, I came across, you know I'm into exercise here, or trying to be. I came across this exercise designed for seniors I wanted to share with you. It's designed to build muscle and strength in the arms and in our shoulders. Uh, and it seems easy, so I thought I would pass it on to you. The article su suggested that we do it three times a week. Begin by standing in a com on a comfortable surface uh, where you have plenty of room at each side. Then, uh, with a five pound potato, potato sack in each hand, you extend your arms straight out from your sides and hold them there as long as you can. Try to reach a full minute holding these potato sacks. Then, just relax. And each day, you will find that you can hold this position just a little bit longer. After a couple of weeks, move on up to a 10 pound potato sack then a 50 pound potato sack and then eventually you get to the place where you can lift a hundred pound potato sacks and hold them in each hand and hold them your arms straight out for a full minute and once you feel confident at that level then put a potato in each sack <laughs> okay i didn't write it i'm only sharing it <laughs> okay. there are a couple of symptoms of old age and old age, as we're going to be discussing it here, can be at any age. We all know people, uh, older people, who are young, they are sprite, they are alive and vibrant and excited about living. And we also know young people who are kind of set in their ways, a bit fearful about taking a risk and moving out into their lives. And really, what, what makes the difference here? Old people who are young and young people who are growing old. I think it's attitude. And our attitude, thoughts, feelings, generate and attract to us the kinds of experiences that we have in life. That's Unity's understanding of how our mind works, the law of mind action, which says thoughts that we hold in our minds will produce of their kind in our life experience in some way. So if we are thinking bloom, loom and gloom and and destruction and all of these other things here, we will most likely find ourselves drawing to us experiences that are difficult, maybe painful, okay? Now that doesn't mean that uh, bad things do not happen to good people. Uh, sometimes uh, we need to grow, and so we call lessons and experiences to us for the purpose of growing spiritually. I want to share a symptom of growing old at any age. A teenage boy, he seemed placid. And this is from a psychologist who was called in to work with this young boy. And uh, he wrote, the teenage boy seemed placid as he approached the hospital bed to give him an evaluation. And his mother was seated nearby and she was quiet, working on her knitting. And he said that he walked over to the boy and he introduced who he was. And he looked, the boy looked right through him. And he started screaming, I can't see, I can't see. And the psychologist said, I, I, I never, I had never experienced such dramatic example of hysterical blindness. 
And he asked the mother, well, how long has this been going on? And the mother looked up and said, uh, ever since you stepped in front of his television. Situations, problems creep in our lives. And sometimes they stand in the way of our being able to see that God is working in a situation. Just like the doctor standing in front of this boy's television set. Here's another symptom of growing old. Uh, this one, too, was taken at a hospital. My patient in the hospital had led a tough life, and it showed. He was disheveled, he was unkept, and recently, while he was in a particularly somber mood, I was combing his hair uh, when he mumbled, it's hopeless. And I said, don't say that, and it's not hopeless. You just need to make a decision to change your life and seek some help. And you'll see things will start to be, start looking up for you. And turning around, he said, I was talking about my hair. Sometimes problems that come to us uh, cause other people, friends, relatives, those who care about us, they want to diagnose us. They want to know what's wrong with us. And uh, we have to stand strong in the things that are important to us. And the last symptom of old age, of growing old, is that a psychiatrist gets a frantic call. You've got to help me, doc, a woman says. My husband, he's, he's a big opera, he thinks he's a big opera star. And uh, every single night, he sings at the top of his lungs, uh, Adia, uh, Aida, Rigoletto, Traviato, send it to me, the shrink says, and I'll see what I can do. A week later, the woman calls again, Doc, I, I don't know what you did, but it, it's working, it's working. And, uh, well, did you, did you cure him? And he said, uh, well, not really. I just gave him a smaller part. When we want to sing out in life, sometimes other people don't understand us. And they want to squelch that, that joy, that enthusiasm in us. Don't let this happen to you. Uh, the little wisdom cards that you have been handed out, I pulled a couple back and I peeked at these, okay? And one of my favorites is grandparents are there to help the child get into mischief that they haven't thought of yet. <laughs> and another is don't look back, you're not going there. You're not going that way. Uh, have any of you pulled any that you would like to share? Again, this is an unusual service, and I'm just going to have some fun here. Yes, Alicia. search for the fountain of youth, okay? Uh, and not realizing that we always have it within us. It has to do with what we do with our, our thoughts, our attitudes, our beliefs. Um, the difference, as I said before, is basically, I believe, this attitude. What do I mean by growing up? Usually in the Bible, when it speaks about someone looking up, I look unto the hills from whence come my help or he lifted up his eyes, Jesus lifted up his eyes. It, it means that uh, that person is choosing to look beyond the appearances, negative appearances that may be hitting them right in the face. They're choosing to look beyond that to something better, something higher, raising their thoughts up. And in this world, it is apparent that we have dis-ease, disharmony, and some of the other disses. We have storms in life outer storms, okay, and we have inner storms that go on all the time, and we are called to come up higher. And that's what I mean by growing up. We have a wonderful opportunity
as we grow spiritually and as our bodies mature to experience transformation. And Jesus said, come unto me, all you who are, who are weary, and I will give you rest. Behold, I make all things new. And we have the story of Nicodemus coming to Jesus in the third chapter of John. And he is told by Jesus that to experience heaven, we have to be born again. And I believe that this born again is what I am uh, using the expression growing up to be. Jesus told Nicodemus, now Nicodemus was uh, a leader in, uh, in the Jewish religion. And he came to Jesus by night. And some think, well, he didn't want others to know that he was coming to Jesus. And he was looking to learn more about Jesus. And in John, third chapter, verses 1 through 21, we have this story. And Jesus saying that, uh, that we must be born twice. Be born of flesh and then be born of spirit. And I believe that what is being said here is that we have a physical birth and then we also have a spiritual awakening at some point. And Charles Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity, said that being born again is basically whenever you become aware that God is working in your life or in your situation. That is that aha moment, okay? Uh, whereas before it was all doom and gloom and you were sad, then now you can realize that even though this is my challenge, even though this is a difficulty that I'm facing, I'm gonna move through this. And Charles Fillmore calls this, that awareness that there is something more, that there is a presence and power working in us and in the situation, he calls that being born anew or born again. We are born again like Nicodemus when we decide to open our minds to something new. When we decide to take a different path, when we decide to be open, and because these are the qualities of youth. They're open to life. They're willing to explore. They're willing to say, maybe, and what if? And they're willing to be in awe of this life. And we can learn from them. I think that's why grandparents are so close to their grandchildren, okay? And it is another reason that children bring a blessing into our lives because, because they are young and they haven't been so conditioned as we have and haven't experienced some of the apparent negativity that we have, they can show us how to be light. They can show us how to love and how to be compassionate as they share. Children can also be difficult. No kidding about that, okay? But they are a lot closer, I believe, to the source than we often are. And we can take a lesson from them. And this is one of the blessings of our grandparents. They show us that we can learn from our children and that we can stop growing old and grow up as they are. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. Okay, let's see what we have here. Uh, I think that I will uh, skip this song. Maybe not. Uh, it's called You Are the Music. As we prepare for a meditation. Maybe not. You are the music, I am your song. Help me to sing your word out song. Hello, children. For I am willing that you will be done through me. This magic we're making. I can hardly wait to see Cause you are music You are the music 
I am your song You are the music We are your song Help us to sing your words out strong For we are willing that your will be done through us This magic we're making We can hardly wait to see Cause you are music You are the music we are your songs we are your song we are your song and let's take a moment for reflection our children are back so this will be just a short reflection okay I invite you to close your eyes, take several deep breaths, let the air out, and as you continue to be aware of your breathing, breathe in quietness, breathe out tension, stress, strain. Just decide to let it go with your breath. Breathe in quiet, breathe out worry, fear, anxiety. Allow yourself to be here in this place now. And turn your thoughts inward for a moment and think about this presence and power that is within you, that is working in your life. It is mighty. It is a presence and power that allows you to be open to life to be open to change, and to be open to the good things that God is and has for you. I'm going to state this affirmation and invite you to say it with me in parts. The presence and power of God, together, the presence and power of God is within me now, is within me now. This presence and power this presence and power is in every experience that I have, is in every experience that I have, and I am open, and I am open to its work within me. I am open to God's love. I am open to God's life. I am open to God's peace right now. And I see others as open and experiencing this peace of God. See others as open and experiencing this peace of God. Wherever I am, wherever I am, God is. Thank you, God. Amen. Okay. And we'll move forward now with our offertory. And I understand that we have special music for the offertory from your children. Come. Okay. 